Today on What It's Like, 1967, Oldsmobile 98 four-door hardtop. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. This channel, we dive in deep with the specs, period ads, button switches, and knobs. And most importantly, show what these cars are like. If that sounds like a channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. This 1967 Oldsmobile 98 is currently for sale at Classic Auto Mall, Morgantown, Pennsylvania. For more information, pricing, and pictures pertaining to this very car, click the link below after the show. 1967 Oldsmobile model lineup. These aren't in any particular order. F85, Toronado, 442, Cutlass, Delta 88, Delmont 88, Wagons were offered in Vista Cruiser, Cutlass, and F85. The 98 was at the top. Oldsmobile offered the 98 from 1940 to 1942, and then took a break because of World War II, brought it back in 46 to 1996 in 12 generations. 1967 falls in the eighth generation, which had a production run from 1965 to 1970, designed by Bill Mitchell. The 1967 Oldsmobile 98 could be had as a two-door hardtop, four-door sedan, two-door convertible, and four-door hardtop, built on the GM C-body platform. It also could be had in two trim levels. Holiday was the basement option. Luxury was at the top and luxury was better appointed with better interior and better materials used. 1967 saw a facelift design, 66 on top, 67 on the bottom. Starting in the front, the grills are totally different. 67 has a three point profile grill that goes the whole way across the front. Not to say that the 66 doesn't have a point in the center, it's just more protruded on the 67 which you will see better when we do the walk around. Round headlights on the 67 versus round headlights with square bezels on the 66. The 67 also has front marker lights that the 66 doesn't have. On the side, the rocker molding has been revised. Wheel flares in the front. Wheel arches are more pointy on the 66 versus the 67, they come to more of a smooth edge. Both of the cars have chrome trim that goes the outline of the wheel well. Rear designs are completely different. The 66 has a taller, more pronounced fin area. Tail lights are more angular on the 66. 98 script is moved from just behind the front fender on the 66 to the rear quarter section on the 67. Moving inside to the dash region, both are completely different. Two-spoke steering wheel versus three-spoke steering wheel on the 67. Which do you like better in the comment section below? Let's talk specs. 217 inches long, 80 inches wide, 55.5 inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 123 inches. It weighs 4,184 pounds. Price, $4,351, which is equivalent to you spending $39,190.26 in the year 2023. So to put it in perspective, you could buy a brand new Cadillac CT4 for about the same money. 1967, total Oldsmobile production was 548,390 units. Total 98 four-door holiday hardtop was 28,480 units. Moving on to engines, Oldsmobile offered two flavors of the 425 cubic inch displacement V8 7 liters. If you got the Super Rocket, it made 365 horsepower at 4,800 RPM. If you got the Starfire Rocket, it made 375 horsepower at the same RPM rating. 470 pound-feet of torque at 3,200 RPM. Compression, 10, 25 to 1, five main bearings. The 365 horsepower version, when mated to the three-speed automatic, 0 to 60 could be had in 7.6 seconds. Theoretical top speed, 129 miles per hour. Average fuel consumption, 9.1 miles to the gallon. Let's talk styling. Look at how wide, look at how far that this comes out. Also, the grill doesn't stop. It actually goes. That is a really cool design. Turn signal is located right underneath this bumper piece. Look at this design from the top down angle. I love that it comes to a point here. 
There's also a center line, but the center line doesn't come, or at least it doesn't look like it comes nearly as high as these lines on the sides. Coming around the side, these are nice markers, bumpers. Look how this is channeled in here. Also check out this point here. The wheel wells aren't flared, but there is a trim piece that comes down here. Notice that crease goes the whole way down the belt line. There's a nice chrome panel that runs the rocker. So check out this line that starts here. One's got fender skirts. So check out how this is angled. This is flat and then it angles back in. This one has fins, just little tiny fins. Vertical tail lights. Backup lights. Look at the design of this bumper. Look at how far down it goes and it wraps up. I mean, just take a look at that. It's got a center line on the deck lid. This isn't plushy. It's it's actually hard vinyl top. This car has drip rails. This door has a lot of heft to it. Just look at the door panel. This deep maroon color. It's like a vinyl on the top here, and then it goes into more like a fabric. It's a really weird feeling material. Almost feels like styrofoam, really armrest and door handle to pull the door shut nice bright work to separate color carpet down here look at all of the bright work door handle here window switches seat controls vent window which is crank operated a joystick or toggle style side mirror Coming down inside the pedal box down here. Emergency brake, brake release, brake pedal, gas pedal. Just take a look at this interior. That's what the door sounds like shutting. It's a nice quality shut. Here is what over the hood impression looks like. Here is what first person looks like. There is adequate space underneath the steering wheel between my hand and my lap and the only reason I show this is because if you don't fit in the car it's not very comfortable to drive it if you don't fit but this one has tilt wheels so you can tilt the wheel to the desired position to drive this car on to the button switches and knobs just look at how these colors complement each other moving from left to right headlights wipers antenna rear defroster in the first pod, the gasoline gauge is at the top and it's surrounded by idiot lights, coolant, temperature, either in the hot position, oil pressure, brake, amp meter, cold coolant temperature, speedometer with odometer inside of it, drive modes read, park, reverse, neutral, drive, super, and low, clock, climate controls, notice to change the temperature, it rotates vertically, ignition, lighter, AM FM radio and ashtray up above there are sun visors and they're pretty big there's my hand for reference over here there is a nice daytime nighttime rear view mirror as well as another sun visor with vanity mirror this one has a center armrest which you can move out of the way to have a third person sit in the front or you can have a place to put your arm and your significant other's arm 
on to the glove box test. Here's our test subject. Here's my hand for reference. Here is our glove box in question. Oh, look at that, it fits right in. Getting in the rear door, this door feels heavier than the front door. Unfortunately, we can't put the window down because they're electric windows, but check out the armrest. Door handle to pull the door shut, door handle to get out, window switch for the window, ash tray, cigarette lighter here. Just check out the back seat. Here is what the front looks like from the rear. Let's take a gander at the greenhouse or the pillar to glass ratio, which is really nice in this car. That is what the view looks like out the rear window. Let's take a look at the seat profile. This is actually a pretty comfortable seat. It, it reclines ever so slightly. It, it does dip down in the back back there quite a bit. Here is what my knee situation looks like. There's enough space to put my fingers in between my knee and the seat. This is what I look like sitting in the back. There's tons of headroom back here. It wouldn't be so bad to ride around in this car. I'm sure it has a nice floaty ride. These seats are pretty comfortable. There isn't an armrest back here. There is a speaker as well as a parcel shelf. There are reading lights one on the passenger side as well as one on the driver's side there is a coat hook on the driver's side as well as a coat hook on the passenger side notice there is not a dome light in the center notice all the chrome trim around the windows coming to the under the hood section right here is the hood release That releases the hood. So the hood release is right here. It's all in one. It's a two-handed job. Coming underneath this hood, there's the Super Rocket V8 Oldsmobile Ultra High Compression. This car does have AC. This is the air conditioning compressor. Power steering, power brakes. On the positive side, a big, comfortable car. It's like getting a Cadillac, but paying less for it. Power everything, pillarless, the best four doors in my opinion. Big V8 with smooth performance. Against it, thirsty, and a pretty long slash big car. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather. Paper or plastic, steak or chicken. Two scenarios today. Would you rather have a 1966 Oldsmobile 98 four-door hardtop or a 1967 Oldsmobile 98 four-door hardtop or a 1968 Oldsmobile 98 four-door hardtop? I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to hit the pause button. Moving on to the second scenario. Which episode would you like to see on Wednesday? If your pick doesn't win, fear not. All these episodes have already been shot and they're in the pipeline and will be featured on the channel eventually. 1934 Lincoln Series K or 1935 Hudson Super 8 or 1954 Hudson Jet. Poll in the community tab as well as vote in the comment section on to name that tune. First person to give both a name of the band and song title will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. If you don't have Facebook and would like to get in touch with me, shoot me an email. All of that will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate all of the support. And until next time, I'm not sure if we're going to have an episode tomorrow or not. I've been hacking my brains out all day. So until next time, toodaloo! People get so bent out of shape about pronunciations. Is it Florida? or Florida. I don't take off points for somebody that says Florida. I say Florida. Depending on what part of the country you're from, you're going to say it differently. My father-in-law is from the South, and I say trailer, but he says trawler. Does that make it wrong? English people pronounce Packard, Packard, not Packard, but I don't get upset about it. Anyway, check this out. I just wanted to show you guys this. I downloaded this app that takes text and it makes it into speech. These are all the words that I couldn't pronounce. I could pronounce orange. I used that as a base word to see if she could pronounce orange. Orange. But I should have tried a more complicated word for her or something like that. So let's try this one, see what this sounds like. 
Devox. Sorry, I mispronounced that one because I was told wrong. S kind. I spelled that one wrong, so that was my fault. If I if I spelled it right, it would have came out right because I tried it later on, spelled right. Erskine. So that was my fault. But I should have did a a harder base word like this word. Toronto.